Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on using synthetic data to improve accuracy of scalable machine vision and manufacturing. Okay, so I am Chris Andrews. I am the COO and head of product of Rendered AI. Uh, I uh, am responsible for marketing product management um, and, uh, and a variety of other things at Rendered. We're a seed stage startup. Uh, my background is about 25 years in software development uh, as a developer and consultant. And then uh, I also um, spent about 15 years in product management. And you can contact me at Chris at Rendered AI. Uh, Josh, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. So uh, welcome, everyone. So I'm Josh Pickard uh, from Eigen Innovations. Um, I'm the director of innovation at the company. So that has me focusing on a lot of the technologies um, and sensors and different things that, that we deploy uh, and build in order to power machine vision within manufacturing. Uh, I lead the R&D team at the company, uh, which is located uh, in Fredericton, New Brunswick in, in Canada. And you can reach me at the contact information below if you have any questions. Awesome. Well, thank you, Josh, for joining me today. Uh, we are excited to be able to uh, collaborate with Eigen and Josh to put on this webinar. And again, we're going to focus today on, uh, on improving scalable machine vision in manufacturing. What I'm going to focus on first a little bit is an intro and overview of Rendered AI and what we're all about. Uh, we're going to give Josh plenty of time to talk about uh, Eigen Innovations and their work in using synthetic data in machine vision. Uh, and then we're gonna, uh, we'll wrap up with, with some Q&A. Uh, what we would ask is during the seminar, if you would please type your questions into the webinar Q&A window, that's represented by the couple little question bubbles. And we will uh, both verbally and we can also in text answer questions after the presentation is over. We're gonna shoot for about 30-ish minutes in, in, uh, in content. Uh, maybe less if we uh, go too fast, and uh, and then we'll we'll save plenty of time for Q and A. Rendered AI is a uh, is a seed stage startup uh, based in Seattle. We offer a cloud hosted platform in AWS that enables customers to generate uh, simulated uh, synthetic computer vision content, imagery, video, and other content to help overcome the challenges in acquiring and using real sensor data. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a sec. If we look around what's happening today in the market and in just about every market from, uh, from manufacturing to warehousing, logistics, uh, medical, healthcare, you know, insurance, everything around this is being instrumented from the, the light bulbs over your head to your phone to thousands of, uh, of new satellite sensors being put up in the sky. That centralization of everything is leading to a massive tidal wave of data that is, uh, it is approaching us. Typically what we talk about, uh, what we, the, the tool that we explore to use and apply today to process all of that data is artificial intelligence, uh, sometimes also called machine learning systems, and other domains could be called computer vision or uh, referred to as machine vision. And what we see is that there are some typical barriers that limit the, the adoption or deployment of artificial intelligence. We find that uh, often there is excessive costs and time required in purchasing and labeling real sensor data. So uh, if you need to uh, pick out every person or every car or every object in an image, that, that takes time. We also find that if you're relying on training algorithms based upon real sensor data, that, uh, that you only can capture what happens in reality and, uh, and often the distribution of events that you're interested in, such as defects or uh, identifying missing parts or, or equipment, those things often are rare. And so they, they, it can actually be hard to capture enough data to, uh, to train AI without bias. In many cases, uh, customers want to try to uh, put a, deploy a system in place that is going to use artificial intelligence to process data. 
but they want some surety that this is going to work before they go through expensive deployment or implementation. So you need data to train your algorithm and without the data, it's impossible to innovate and move forward in some cases. And finally, what we find is data labeling is imprecise and incomplete. I believe that Eigen in some cases uses uh, thermal imaging. We have customers that use synthetic aperture radar and x-ray. And what we find is that humans aren't really that great at, uh, at identifying things in, uh, in alternative uh, sensor modalities such as uh, x-ray, multispectral, and hyperspectral imaging. Another uh, issue that it ends up uh, that our customers end up encountering is that they may think that they're training an algorithm to solve a particular problem today, but yet we know that that problem is going to change next year. So that the the rare objects or the defects or the the parts that they're looking for in their computer vision and imagery are not going to stay the same forever. Business is changing faster and faster than ever today, and we we know that the problems that we're going to be trying to address and optimize next year will be will be different from the problems we're addressing this year. Back to the sensorization of everything, what we also are seeing is that um, the vast majority of data out there is unstructured, unlabeled, and not ready for AI. And, and so what we see is that there are tremendous issues when using real data to train algorithms to make decisions and, and, make, uh, and business optimizations. And what we find is that synthetic data or engineered data that AI can actually interpret as real data has the potential to help solve this AI data problem. Synthetic data uh, is designed to, uh, to attempt to address specific algorithm training processes. If you need rare objects, you should be able to design a data set that has those rare objects. If you need greater variety in defects or, uh, or smudges or, uh, or misordered parts, you should be able to actually generate synthetic data that represents those things without having to actually go and simulate all those things, replicate all those situations in the real world. So what we see is that traditionally a lot of customers, especially you know, computer vision scientists, engineers, they, they end up being stuck with whatever data they're given. They do some training, they kind of do some validation and then they get what they get. With synthetic data, what we see is that tomorrow's workflow for AI actually incorporates a different workflow in which a data scientist, computer vision engineer can actually create, design and create the data set that they think will solve their problem, train algorithms, test, and then compare, compare the results. And if they need to, they can actually update the creation or generation of synthetic data to go back in and see if they can improve on that training. Synthetic data is computer generated, so it, it tends to be inexpensive. You can generate lots of it. it it's generated with 100% accurate labels. Uh, you can still use real data sets for comparison and post-processing. Uh, and then data can be designed for edge or impossible cases, and specifically for removing bias uh, in, in uh, diverse cases such as trying to train for very rare defects, or even trying to remove bias in skin tone in human images. Rendered AI offers a platform as a service that enables our customers to build and design the simulated content that they need without having to worry about the cost of setting up and maintaining cloud infrastructure to generate lots and lots of data at scale. Rendered includes uh, collaboration capabilities, data set management, uh, a, a developer framework for building out simulations, wrapping simulations. Rendered's platform allows you to, uh, to include a variety of third-party content and simulation capability. And as you can see, on top of the platform, what we end up helping our customers build, or sometimes our customers build themselves, are vertically oriented, uh, what we call synthetic data channels that are designed to output data to address specific needs. Uh, we have diverse customer cases that range from vehicle uh, interior ground-based cameras uh, for things like security and, uh, and object detection use cases. We, um, we are experts in physically accurate synthetic data and we have access to some 
uh, simulation capability from a variety of third parties, including some uh, some academic institutions for things as complex as X-ray, uh, physically accurate X-ray and synthetic aperture radar. And our system is actually uh, deployed as part of AI pipelines in several customer cases, such that uh, our customers can actually headlessly configure and drive synthetic data generation and then export uh, or, or import data from rendered AI for use in their own automated training pipeline. Okay, and so a couple, uh, well, a few months ago, about a year ago, um, we joined a, a, a networking a company corporate group called AI Partnerships, and and I came across a company called Eigen Innovations, and, I, and it actually is quite possible, I don't recall now, Josh may have reached out to me, but we we got on the phone and we saw obvious opportunity to work together, and so I'm super happy to be able to host Eigen today. Um, Eigen, for, for us, was one of the proof points that synthetic data really can work out there in the field. And so now I'd like to give Josh the opportunity to talk about how they are using synthetic data and how they explored um, rendered AI as an option for uh, increasing some variability in some of the training that they're doing. Josh, you want to go ahead and, and uh, take it away? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chris. So um, I'm excited to be here um, to, to talk about Eigen's approach to scalable machine vision in manufacturing and the relationship that we had with rendered AI to explore synthetic data for further improving the accuracy of the models that we actually deploy. Uh, do you want to go to the next one, Chris? So who is Eigen Innovations? So Eigen is a Canadian-based uh, company founded in 2012 that helps manufacturers from all industries um, unlock the full potential of machine vision within their application. So at Eigen, we provide scalable end-to-end -end software products um, to allow customers to do everything from digitally designing their machine vision system to what we do with um, uh, software in order to process image data. Um, and, and actually deploy machine vision systems that leverage machine learning. Our unique offering combines both cloud and edge based software um, in order to have real time quality inspections that we can uh, control and manage through through very simplified interfaces. Our manufacturing end users uh, vary quite, uh, quite a bit, both in discrete and continuous manufacturing applications. Um, to date, we've targeted automotive and plastic manufacturers um, all the way to, to medical device manufacturers, um, deploying software such as thermal cameras and color cameras and collecting process data in order to, to solve very complicated manufacturing quality inspection problems. At Eigen, our, our focus is to provide our customers with machine vision solutions that scale. Um, so we want to work with our customers in order to build out a solution that works and then be able to take that solution and scale it across their enterprise. Uh, and we've done this with, with many customers to date. Um, so we help customers solve very complex manufacturing problems uh, and, then, and then scale these from one line to many lines, even to many factories. Um, to date, we've deployed solutions all across the globe um, and process massive amounts of data uh, in real time to, to generate quality alerts and actions. And you can see the, the scale of you know, the data that we collect and process on a, on a daily um, uh, daily uh, workflow, uh, such as 600 million images that we process from all of the deployed cameras in order to make these, these real-time predictions. Uh, next slide. So what are the main industry-wide challenges that currently limit successful machine learning uh, solutions within manufacturing? And there are a few. Um, we'll focus on the three main ones here. 
the first one is around data requirements. Um, in order to have a successful machine learning solution, it requires large data sets that are properly annotated, um, that have enough coverage of the types of defects or features that you're looking for so that the model can be robust and, and perform well, well enough for the application. Um, these data sets are often deployment specific, meaning that when you move to a new deployment or a new line, you often have to repeat this data set collection and annotation, um, which adds just to the, this, the scale, the severity of generating uh, these data sets throughout uh, the enterprise. Moving on to uh, model development and management, this can be very complex. Um, the deployment specific models that are often generated quickly become a nightmare to manage uh, and develop um, and just, just refine on an ongoing basis. Also, these, these uh, development specific models or deployment specific models often require custom augmentation strategies um, in order to, to get better coverage of the, the types of features that you want to inspect. And lastly, um, even when you have a solution that is working on the first machine, often scaling that to additional machines, additional deployments can be difficult and even impossible uh, because of comparability uh, of the data sets over these machines. And, and lastly, um, for scalability, if you have to change your hardware um, for example, a new sensor, a new lens, uh, change the, the placement of the, the camera, uh, the data set changes completely. And that means that uh, the model performance can be severely impacted. Uh, you can go on, Chris. So what, what is our approach? And for us, um, image standardization is a key component uh, to building a machine learning model that scales and works well within manufacturing. And so I'll, I'll take the opportunity to define what we mean by image standardization. So this is the concept of eliminating undesired variations from image data while ensuring that we retain desired variations in the resulting data. By removing variations, this means that the model that is trained on these images only needs to learn the right features for the task. Um, so things such as background, perspective variations, we can completely remove that from the data so the model doesn't have to learn it. The key benefits of image standardization include significantly smaller data sets uh, compared to raw data, similar performance can be achieved with a model um, with substantially smaller data sets. It also means that we can take a model uh, trained on this data uh, and scale it to a new machine without actually introducing new data in some cases. On the model development side, rather than deployment specific models, we can actually change to a single model that covers all deployments because the data sets of all of these deployments are compatible and standardized. And this means reductions in model tuning time and decreased effort uh, to actually manage uh, this model throughout the enterprise. And on scalability, so image standardization is actually a camera agnostic technique. It means that we transform the image from uh, a raw camera um, associated with, with hardware into a representation that doesn't have a relationship to the physical aspects of that camera. And what this means is that we can actually use different cameras across different deployments with the same model uh, without impacting scalability, which makes it much easier to scale a solution when image standardization is used. Can you go on, Chris? So I'm uh, excited to announce uh, our newest product offering uh, called Eigen Image Twin. So Eigen Image Twin is something that's been in the works for over five years, and we've been using it internally and deploying it to customers uh, throughout that time. 
It allows us to improve the performance and scalability of our solutions. And basically, Eigen Image Twin is uh, application agnostic software that applies a CAD based image standardization technique and allows us to generate standardized images that allow the development of highly scalable and high performing machine learning models. So, how does the technology work? Uh, quite simply, we take a raw image, such as a thermal image we see here, we combine that with uh, CAD of the part, and we pass that into Image Twin, which performs a bunch of operations, including object pose estimation, texture mapping, computing visibilities, in order to generate an internal 3D representation of every part uh, that we inspect. This internal representation can get rendered from a fixed perspective in order to generate these standardized images that you see to the right. And so we can generate these standardized images for any raw image input. And we do this real time in factories today. Do you wanna go to the next first? So the software supports uh, all kinds of different image formats and is deployable both on cloud and edge use cases, uh, depending on the application. The other thing to, to note about Eigen Image Twin is that it's not just for uh, single camera inspections and can also be leveraged for multiple camera inspections, where we can take multiple images as an input, fuse them together through Eigen Image Twin in order to generate that one standardized representation as an output. Um, and so today, the majority of our machine vision deployments that we use for discrete component inspection actually leverages Eigen Image Twin technology to ensure that we generate scalable solutions for our customers. The next one, Chris. And so um, I'm also excited to announce that uh, you know we're we've taken our internal tool sets and productized them. So the the technology that we've developed over the last five years for image standardization is now available to the public to use and explore. So Eigen Image Twin is now available for free beta access. You can access, um, enroll for access at eigen.io uh, today. And we're, we're very excited to see what, uh, what the public can start to do with this tool set. Uh, it's provided a lot of benefit for us within manufacturing in order to scale solutions. Uh, and we know there's all kinds of interesting things that, that people will do with this tool set going forward. So please feel free uh, to sign up for Eigen Image Twin. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing what kind of problems people can solve. So now moving on to the second part of the talk. Um, so the synthetic data investigation that we've done using the Eigen Image Twin combined with uh, the synthetic data tool sets provided by Rendered AI. So it's important to note before we dive in the difference between undesired versus desired variations. It's, it's a key concept in achieving good results with synthetic data. So as, as I showed, Eigen Image Twin removes undesired variations from the data set. But what remains is a data set um, that has desired variations within it. But sometimes the data set remaining um, still has insufficient coverage of these desired variations that we expect and that we require. So synthetic data is, is the key approach to introducing additional desired variations that can help us improve the performance of these models. So the application that we targeted for this investigation was a surface inspection of defects on high gloss painted parts. In order to generate this data, we use the Eigen Deflectometry Inspection System that you can see to the right. And this uses a technique of synchronized lighting and image capture combined with specialized processing in order to amplify the visibility of defects, such as scratch and dirt and contamination. 
Um, and then we train um, AI models in order to detect these service defects in real time as these parts are being manufactured. So the, the first part of the investigation is the collection of our raw data data set. Um, so in order to do this for this investigation, we produced a variety of different parts, had them professionally painted um, and defects imposed that consist of dirt and scratches randomly placed on the surfaces. And then we had to annotate thoroughly each of these images. Um, so there were 221 raw images that we generated for this data set. Each of those was, was annotated. Um, and this formed our raw data set. So having this raw data set uh, is great, and that allows us to build models, conventional models based on raw data. Um, but we know that standardized data can significantly improve the performance. So the next step of the investigation was to generate standardized data using Eigen Image Twin, uh, combined with the part CAD um, of the part that was being manufactured. So you can see what these standardized images look like for this part um, in the top two images. This allows us to remove undesired variations, including background variations and perspective variations, so that the data generated um, is highly consistent, ensuring that the model will, will be able to perform better uh, by focusing on the right features. So we took each of the raw images and we generated a corresponding standardized images from standardized image from that, and that gave us our standardized data set. So the other uh, interesting and quite beneficial aspect of Eigen Image Twin is that internally it has a representation of a 3D asset of every part that goes through it. Um, so the purposes for the purposes of this investigation, we built out a custom pipeline to extract that 3D asset uh, and turn it into a rendered AI compatible Blender file. Um, that we can take and insert into, into their pipelines. And so you can see what these 3D assets look like. Um, the, the Blender file, um, we created customized shaders in order to allow us to accurately display and render um, the image data on that 3D asset. Um, and also, uh, different layers for the different defects that we annotated so that through the rendered AI software, we can actually get out each defect annotated uh, within the synthetic data that is produced. So those Blender files were generated for each, um, each image, each raw image, uh, synthetic image that, uh, that we had in our data set. So we used each of those Blender files within Rendered AI's synthetic data generation software um, in order to generate a very large annotated, fully annotated uh, synthetic image data sets. Each of those Blender files was inserted into the Rendered AI graph that you can see in the top and um, certain variations in object placement were added in order to introduce some desired variation into the data set. It's important to note here that uh, achieving only desired variation is really ideal. Um, we did quite a bit of iteration in order to figure out what worked best within the synthetic data pipeline. Um, and ensuring that uh, we only add desired variation, uh, in this case, minimal pose variation uh, really allows us to generate a synthetic data set that works best with, with the real data that's actually collected. So we generated a synthetic data set with over 1300 images, and you can see what those look like uh, in the bottom, bottom four images there. And so now we have our three different data sets. We have the raw data set, 
a standardized data set, and a synthetic data set. And each of these data sets were converted into training and test uh, sets of images. And we did so in such a way that um, these training and test images all come from um, the same data. Um, so the, the data is directly com uh, comparable in the training and test data sets to ensure that the models that we generate are also directly comparable. So we generated several object detection models um, with similar training workflows for each of the four models highlighted to the left. So these four models, starting with the conventional model, was a model that was trained on raw image data, applied to raw image data. The next was a model trained on synthetic image data only, applied to standardized image data. And then we used Eigen's typical approach, which is standardized image data applied to, or a model trained on standardized image data applied to standardized image data. And lastly, augmenting uh, that with synthetic data. So that gave us four different models that we investigated the performance of. And so here's the performance results. Um, so the performance results that we present here are the typical COCO performance metrics for object detection. The values under the different data sets, uh, higher values signified better performance uh, in terms of detecting the defects and bounding them. And one thing is, is very clear out of these results. It is that the conventional approach of uh, training a model on raw data only actually performs uh, the worst out of all of the models that we developed. So adding synthetic data and leveraging some standardized data are, are very valuable approaches to improving model performance and robustness. Um, so Eigen's typical approach of standardized data um, generates uh, improvements of, of nearly 200%. And then adding synthetic data on top of that to augment standardized data gives us an additional performance improvement of about an additional 21% on top of that, uh, which shows that synthetic data is, is really a valuable tool to get additional performance and robustness improvements on these models. So just to summarize, so that the key findings out of the investigation is that really the, the conventional approach that we companies have used, machine learning companies have used for years um, of training models and raw data is, is really becoming outdated. Um, combining standardized images with synthetic images are ways to significantly improve the performance of these models. And so synthetic or standardized images, um, the main benefit is that we can produce highly scalable machine learning models that are really relevant for what we do within the manufacturing industry in order to scale from one line to many. And when we augment these standardized image data sets with synthetic data, uh, we can get significant performance improvements on top of that to generate things that we simply haven't seen yet uh, in the factory. But it's, it's extremely important on the synthetic data side to focus on adding desired variations into the data set and not undesired variations. The, the latter can actually degrade the performance. So that, that is a key consideration in order to get good performance out of this synthetic data augmentation. And so for anyone interested in further details about this study, uh, feel free to, to uh, access our white paper on our website, eigen.io slash image twin white paper. And you'll have full details of, of the study and results there. Uh, so lastly, just to just to conclude, so you know it's been a pleasure to to present um, you know the, the uh, our approach to scalable machine vision um, and our exploration into synthetic data. And so anyone, please, if you're interested in standardized data, standardized images, and the Eigen Image Twin, uh, feel free to enroll for beta access at eigen.io. And we look forward to kind of seeing what kind of problems everyone has and can solve with, with our tool set. And any other questions, if you're interested in any of our other software products, 
uh, you can reach out to our sales team at the uh, the link on the right. So I think that's uh, that's all from my side. So back to you, Chris. All right, Josh, that was uh, that was great, and I'm happy to report that, of course, the moment I said that your voice was a little bit garbled, it completely cleared up. So uh, all the rest of it was was fantastic. Uh, it's just super exciting for me to see the you know both the rigor and the the the, the case study that you showed. And you really validate a lot of what we hear from customers, including things like don't introduce variation that doesn't actually occur in real data sets because it's going to degrade the performance of your models, which, which makes sense. But uh, I think a lot of a lot of data scientists don't they aren't asked to step back and think about the kind of the actual physical scenarios that they are uh, where data has been captured. So what you described is a really great um, Case study, learning example for customers broadly in computer vision, not just in, in manufacturing. All right, um, so we're almost at the end here uh, to follow up uh, with us as well. Um, if you happen to be at the CDPR conference in next week in Vancouver, we will have a booth. Um, we'll have a tutorial there on synthetic data and using a platform for synthetic data. We'd love to see folks there. Um, you can. Sign up to try out Rendered AI by visiting uh, www.rendered.ai. And if you use either the content code boxes uh, or uh, the content code OVDEMO, what you'll get access to is uh, de demonstration workspaces to do things like randomize boxes in a warehouse. Or if you're an NVIDIA Omniverse fan, um, what you'll actually get is access to uh, some of the basic tutorials for NVIDIA Omniverse realized as cloud applications in, uh, in rendered AI. Uh, and you will see the, the basic tutorials that they actually offer, uh, upon which you can build to do all kinds of complex uh, factory simulations, uh, manufacturing simulations, and much, much more. And of course, um, synthetic data and computer vision can definitely be daunting for some folks. And we always recommend that you actually reach out to us if you want to have a conversation or a demonstration of our capabilities. And you can do that by emailing us at sales at rendered.ai. OK, so uh, I, I can't see the, uh, the the chat interface here. Uh, and so I was, so Stacy, uh, if he was helping us out, um, maybe Josh, if you can see if there are questions, uh, maybe you can read them out and we can, we can uh, respond to them. And if not, I have a question for you. Let's say either you're on mute or there aren't any questions. So there are no questions, Chris. OK, great. No problem. All right. So Josh, I, I wanted to uh, to to hear from you. So when you when you first started working with us, one thing that you anticipated was that working with synthetic data was going to speed your time to market because you had this idea that you could create synthetic data to train models and deploy them in production right away without even seeing real data. Can you talk to me a little bit about why why that didn't work in your particular case and, and what you think uh, the new nuances for somebody in manufacturing who's trying to do things like tune models to do better defect detection? Yeah, it, it's a great question, Chris, and it, it's one of the the uh, aspects of of synthetic data that w that we did investigate um, throughout this this uh, this study. So the the main challenge we had was that in order to get good performance out of uh, synthetic data, it needs to be as comparable as possible to the the raw data. The, the data that is captured by the uh, by the system. Um, if there's any differences there, then the the model becomes biased towards um, you know the differences that it sees in synthetic data. So we had actually done a, a pretty large scale investigation into can we only use synthetic data combined with raw data and get good performance on completely novel situations? Um, and the answer was. Uh, no, it's it's very difficult to get comparable results. Um, and so for us, 
you know, the the image standardization tool is is a strategy also to make data more comparable to synthetic data. Um, because it is it is a rendering approach, right? We we are generating a 3D asset. Um, and when we render that and generate our standardized image, it means that the synthetic data that we could generate can be much more comparable to the standardized image than the raw image, which is why we get much better performance when we generated a model on synthetic data and applied that to standardized images that it had never seen. Um, in that case, the data was more comparable and the performance was actually better. Um, that is to say, if it can be made more comparable to raw data, you may get similar results, uh, but it's much more difficult because of all the other variations in the environment. Yeah, that, that really makes sense. We, we tend to see uh, two types of customers. Uh, one type may simply be looking for kind of what I call warm hits, where they 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 don't have a lot of the real data. They um, they just want to see if they can get any level of detection performance. And for for those customers, what we what we often do see is that raw and pure synthetic data can work, and in some cases can work pretty well to achieve those raw hits or warm hits. But then what we also see in the the, the sides of the market where you kind of are tuning computer vision uh, algorithm performance is exactly what you described, which is one of the reasons why we we emphasize physically accurate synthetic data. Um, in in these cases, you, you described it very well. If the if the synthetic data is too different at a pixel level from real data, raw data, then you'll end up tuning the algorithms to detect synthetic data, not actually to detect the the variations that you want to find. Uh, for those purposes, uh, for example, we actually uh, allow customers to deploy another technique, which is to to post-process synthetic images with a cycle GAN trained on real imagery, which uh, which kind of forces the the embedding space of the, uh, the the parameters for the machine learning model that, that ends up trained on uh, on the, the data set to overlap better with the, the space uh, of a real data set. And so what we see that in that case is is, is better performance uh, in terms of training on synthetic and then applying uh, and detecting to real data sets. Um, there, there's lots more that we could go into there. Um, are there any common questions that you run into, Josh, that you wanted to cover uh, before we, we close out? Um, I guess my, my main question would be, you know, we, we explored a, a few different options to add desired variations uh, within the rendered AI tool set. Are, are there are there other types of uh, techniques, maybe generative techniques, anything that we could use in order to introduce additional novel variations that could further improve results? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and the generative AI piece is something that I'm getting asked a lot about at conferences, for example. Uh, absolutely. Uh, one area that we've already done some experimentation in is to start to use generative AI to allow a user to do a text prompt to get a, uh, a greater variability in, in textures that are applied to a 3D CAD model, such as what you described. And so, for example, um, we've seen some, some cases where uh, we could use that type of technique to change camouflage on, uh, on military equipment in simulated remote sensing imagery. Um, we, you know, we could certainly use it to apply dirt and other things. I, I think there, there's a whole lot of research there to be done yet, because one thing I just saw an article on is that training, training AI on generative AI developed data can actually lead to some feedback loops that are, that lead you down this path of then being able to mostly detect synthetic data. Um, but I certainly think uh, generative AI, you know, nobody was talking about it a year ago. Um, it is now all over the place, and it's an area that I think we're we're going to see a lot more application of in uh, in markets like manufacturing and, and many others, um, any place where there's computer vision down the road. So, 
Okay, well, I think we're right at right about at 45 minutes here. Uh, we don't want to keep everybody for too long. Uh, we would like to thank everyone who attended today. Uh, we will provide uh, after the webinar a, a note with the link to the the presentation, uh, the link to the white paper that uh, Josh shared, and then we will also provide some information on how to get in touch with us. So again, thank you everyone for participating in the webinar today and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone.